Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trofan, it's a babbling Belgian and welcome back to Gwentage. As with the previous video, we're going to be talking about the new things that have arrived with the Tenet coup part of the expansion um, of the Price of Power expansion. And today we're going to be looking at the card reviews. Last time we talked about the new journeys, the Aretusa journey. If you want to see what we talked about back then, you're going to have to check that video out. It will be at the end of this video and it's also linked um, in the description down below. So, uh, but today we're going to be looking at the new cards and some of them have clearly been, yeah, quite broken already. So I'm going to put out a few warnings as well about these new cards, but uh, let's head into the deck building and go through all 26 new cards one by one. So as usual, we're going to be going through these cards one by one from the bottom to the top. So let's start with Northern Realms and the Aretusa student. So a four point card for four provisions has patience. So again, her order ability value will increase at the end of every one of your turn. And her order ability is when she's on the range row, you can use her order ability to boost an allied unit by zero. So that will increase every single turn. So basically the boosting variant of the bad art student, which is of course very interesting because lore wise they kind of are a mirror image of each other. Not much else to talk about with this card. It has a bit of a more cartoony look to it, um, which is something that a lot of people have criticized CDPR for. Not that I really mind, I think it fits the uh, student vibe, a bit of the Harry Potter vibe of this. Uh, part of the expansion as well and uh, yeah I don't really mind to have a bit of variation in the art styles. Now next up we have an other mage but this is kind of like another like a dark reflection of the card that we just looked at so the Tanit turn code also four points for four provisions on deploy she gives an enemy unit spying and she also has an order ability that if you use that on a spying um, card, so conspiracy means that you need to target a spying unit, you damage that unit by one. The order ability has a cooldown of two, so you can use this order ability every two turns, but whenever a unit, an enemy unit gains spying, you reduce this unit's cooldown by one. So technically you could use this ability, damage an enemy unit by one, then play a spying unit, and then the next turn you will immediately be able to do this again. There are also ways of, of course, applying spying multiple times and then you will be able to use this card twice in the same turn. Then we have the Syndicate 4 Provision card, Scapegoat, 7 power for 4 provisions, but on deploy, if there is no bounty on the battlefield, you damage yourself by 3. So if there is a bounty, this card plays 7 for 4, if there is not, this is a 4 for 4, but whenever an enemy unit with bounty is damaged, the Scapegoat will also heal himself. I think it's a he, right? Although... I think I might see something hanging there. Uh, I don't know, it's a person in a cage uh, and they're clearly not uh, very well uh, adjusting here because they, yeah, they, they are. They must have been in that cage for a long time. Then we got Skellige the Hermit. So uh, again, seven points for four provisions. On deploy, he damages himself by four. And if he's lower than seven uh, power, so if he's just damaged basically, at the end of your turn, you damage the unit to the right by one and then heal himself by two. So you need to damage the unit to the right before he will heal himself. He will not just passively heal himself if there's nothing to his right. So basically a um, capped version of the Svalblood Priest. So you will be doing damage and putting two points on yourself, but only until you reach that seven again, um, which makes him a bit more beefier, of course. Um, this It feels to me like this card is weaker than the Bear School Witcher, because the Bear School Witcher, of course, gains armor when he's fully up on the... Uh, his seven power and this card doesn't uh, although this card of course heals a bit quicker as well with the downside that you need to damage something to the right then we have the monster four provision card bleeding effigy it's an organic card that banishes a bronze unit from your opponent's graveyard and then you boost an allied unit by its power since it's in the graveyard usually that card will not have been boosted so it's going to be base power most of the time but if you control bloody mistress of or gurney cora which is the same card we'll be talking about her Quite a bit in a minute, you may target gold units. You can just banish a golden unit from your opponent's graveyard, which is, yeah, it might have its uses. It is an organic card, so you will gain an Andrega drone from the um, Arakas and Arcus drone, by the way, uh, because it's Arcus Swarm. Um, from that leader ability but yeah on top of that you do banish units from your opponent's graveyard so that could technically be useful as well but it's going to be limited but 
especially against commandos, this might be a pretty powerful card. Then we have the Northern Realms um, spell, so practice makes perfect. Also for four provisions, shuffle an allied bronze mage to your deck and play a random bronze mage from your deck. Boost the unit you played by zero, but you increase the boost by one for each unit with patience you played this game. Meaning that at the end of a game, this could be a 10 point boost potentially, depending on how many patience units you have actually played. You also shuffle an allied bronze mage back into your deck and play one new. So that means that this could potentially also increase that value because of the fact that patience uh, might be part of the random bronze mage that you're actually playing. So potentially very powerful card. It is a spell, so again, works with Sentry and Spell Weavers to gain you another uh, tick for that. And it triggers it twice because you play another random bronze mage as well. So two ticks for all your Sentry and Spell Weavers and potentially a huge boost for whatever you're playing. And then one of the neutral cards, Dwim Viandra. We talked about her in the journey um, video as well. So she is basically shearing the sheep with magic, which is very funny. She starts at four power four or five provisions and has a double ability. So if you deploy her on the melee row, you set an allied scenario to the final chapter, meaning that you could replay that final chapter of the scenario if you play another card that matches the scenario. This does not trigger the scenario itself. So that's important, but potentially a lot of points because those final cards are usually pretty strong on the scenario cards. If you deploy her on the ranged row instead you refresh the order of an allied location. So a lot of new locations have been added for each faction um, quite recently so all those order abilities usually amounting to three to four points can be reset as well. So a bit of a utility card but not super strong to my mind. It is uh, it has she has her uses but uh, I think we should be fine balance wise. There's other cards that are way more problematic. Then we get the Elven Seer. I've seen a lot of fancy combos with this card already, but starts at four power for five provisions as well. As well, our first Squirtle card because we haven't really talked about Squirtle just yet. Whenever you target this unit with a bronze special card, you spawn and play a copy of that special card once. So basically, the ability should actually be phrased in the sense of the first time you target this unit with a bronze special card ever, you spawn and play a copy of that special card. Um, this could potentially be a lot allows you to play another special card, which is going to benefit Gord, of course, but it also works very well with the new Squirtel special card that we'll be talking about in a minute. But before we do that, we have another Skellige card to have through Singer. Four provisions, uh, no, five provisions for four power. Again, on deploy, you heal an allied unit by two, and the first time you heal an allied unit during your turn, you spawn a deafening siren in this row. But this can happen every single turn. So basically, this is a healing uh, benefit engine so whenever you heal the first time you do that on your turn you will get an extra two points because of the deafening siren this also happens on her deploy ability so basically if you manage to heal those two points to full you gain eight points on deploy with this ability without actually dealing damage which is something very special for a uh, skeleton of course because usually you will be dealing damage like the bear witcher is very powerful to do that but this card doesn't need adrenaline it only needs a damaged unit to gain that point potential so very very good card to my mind also a cultist and a druid so works well with druid decks in general then a very strong addition to Nilfgaard to my mind four power for five provisions that's becoming a team but the master of puppets allows you on order so you need to wait a turn seize a bronze enemy unit with no restrictions whatsoever if you can target that bronze unit it is yours but to counteract that a little bit, you move yourself to the opposite row. This order ability also has a cooldown, so after another turn, your opponent will be able to do the same. So steal their unit back technically. But of course, you could destroy the Master Puppets in that uh, in-between turn. So uh, yeah, very, very powerful card, especially with these shenanigans that Nilfgaard can do by swapping units back and forth from the other side of the field. This can result in a lot of Master of Puppets just flipping all over the place, especially in a mirror match. It's uh, really, really cool to see. Then the, another Syndicate crime that has been added, the Confession Extract. The Syndicate is getting a lot more support for Bounty and this card is no different. You're getting five coins when you play this card but while in the graveyard, you damage an enemy unit by one whenever you place a bounty on it. And you can do this three times. So this is 
very powerful setup for whatever bounty deck you will be playing. Because uh, you, whenever you play a bounty on the unit, you will automatically get that extra damage ping, which is really, really handy because that just saves you on whatever damage you need to do to kill to finish that unit off. Uh, especially with some of the other cards that are added in this expansion. This is a very, very powerful, um, basically eight for five because um, usually you should be able to apply many bounties because this will also work if you apply reapply a bounty if you don't have any damage healers you could technically reapply the bounty and get another damage ping on that same unit then the new monster card for the well the rare monster card is self eater another relic so monsters is getting a lot more support for the relic archetype starts at six power for six provisions and has an order ability that halves this unit's base power and then spawn a base copy uh, no, not a base copy, a copy with the same base power on this row. So basically, basically, if you use the order on the card in this state, you get two self-eaters with three power, three base power. That's important because, of course, you get a pocket for Gan Keon, uh, which is the uh, bronze um, monster card from the previous part of the expansion. But on top of that, this card also has a passive ability that whenever you play a relic, you increase this unit's base power by one. And this causes this well, card to be a great um, engine card. Because basically, you create those trees, uh, those two separate ones with three power each. You play another relic, they become four power each. Then the final one, you split again, two and two. Those become three, three. And then the original goes to five again for your next relic. So that basically goes from six to eight to 11 and so on and so forth. It definitely steamrolls a bit at the end, but of course your opponent can always kill the final one in the row, the one that still has the order ability to stop your train from rolling. So strong guard, but definitely not overpowered. And there we have the square tail card that I was talking about. The Orb of Insight is another spell that allows you to boost an allied unit by two and give it two turns of vitality. Not that strong on its own, but again, this card has a special effect when he's in the graveyard. So while in your graveyard, you remove a counter from this card whenever you play a special card. When the counter reaches zero, so the counter is a tree, so when you play three special cards while this card is in your graveyard, you play this card again and give it doom. So basically this card is two special cards in one. If you combine that with the uh, Squirtle card that we just saw, the Seer, you can double up on these cards. They all end up in the graveyard and they all replay themselves after three other special cards. Do that while there's a whisper on the board and you have this set up properly, allows you to play, I think, up to six uh, of these in a row because they keep popping them out of the graveyard. And because you play them, that's another special card, you play the next one out of the graveyard and they just sequence really, really well. It's really cool to see happen in action, but of course your opponent can try and stop the whisperer part of this combo at least. But again, there's a lot of special cards that can be played after this. It is a spell, so it doesn't count for nature's gift, so you won't be getting three ends, which is good, because if that would happen, then your board would be filled in one go. Uh, so you definitely want, don't want to have that happen. And the epic card for Syndicate it is Ignatius Hail. So a 12 point card for six provisions, which is huge, but on deploy, he damages himself by his tribute cost. And his tribute is nine coins. So even with the tribute reduction, so um, of the books, you will be looking at a four point card instead of a 12 point card. But whenever you place a bounty on an enemy unit, wherever this card is, you reduce this unit's tribute cost by one. So if you played nine bounties, which is a hell of a lot, you uh, cancel the deploy ability automatically. But if you pay the tribute, you also can cancel the deploy ability. But again, you're then just trading off coins with the damage you would be dealing to yourself. So ideally, you would reduce the tribute to, to that much that it would stay at 12. But 12 is going to be a tough call. But again, if you manage to do uh, seven bounties, which is more feasible, this is still a 10 point card for six provisions, which is really, really good. Then we get a neutral um, epic card, so the Bearification, another spell that allows you to transform an artifact into an elder bear. It doesn't matter if this is on your opponent's side or yours, so you could technically transform your opponent's scenario card into a bear. That's going to give you your opponent six points, but they have lost their scenario card at that point. But if you do that on your side of the battlefield, you boost that bear by four points. So you get rid of an annoying scenario card that isn't doing anything anymore, and you get 10 points in return. So again, a 10 point card for six provisions, 
provided that you have an artifact that you want to transform into a bear as this guy's uh, chair is transforming into it as well. I do love the art of this card, it's just really really cool. Then the Nilfgaardian epic card, fur card, another mage, because of course Nilfgaard is getting a lot of mage support here. Three power for seven provisions, but on deploy you play a special card from your hand and then you draw a card. Which is cool on its own, so it's basically a hand tutor, so it allows you to play that card and get another card from your deck, so it's basically also tinning. But he also has a passive ability that allows you, whenever you play a special card, you give spying to a random non-spying enemy unit. So again, giving you some support for the spying archetype on top of everything else as well. Then Northern Realms' epic card, Leticia Charbonneau, we talked about her in the journey as well. Six power for seven provisions has patience, and her patience order ability is on the range row. At the end of this turn, patience value of all allied units is increased by one. So if you use that order ability, you basically replace her patience. So her patience is not going to be triggering anymore. But if you use that order ability, all the other units on the field will have their patience increased by whatever patience value she is at. So for example, if she's four turns on the board already and you have a Banard student that is at five patience, for example, would be doing five damage. You could use Leticia's order ability and the Banard student's order ability will go up to 9 damage. You can use that immediately because of course it says that the patient value will be increased at the end of the turn, not immediately. Um, but that means that at the next turn your Banard student will be doing 10 damage. And that works for all the units on the board. So that is very, very strong. And I think she also increases the uh, boosts on the um, Artusa students, uh, the Artusa adepts because uh, she basically triggers patience again. Then the Skellige epic card is really, really cool. I do like the new Skellige cards. I think art-wise they got the most, uh, yeah, the, the most epic looking cards on this, uh, on this expansion. But offering to the sea an alchemy card that damages all units on the battlefield by one. So basically the same thing that Sabrina's Inferno also does, but instead of doing something else, she's, um, this card spawns a deafening siren on your side of the board and boosted by the number of allied targets. So you get a two point siren and that card is boosted by the amount of allied units that were damaged on your side of the board. So basically by the amount of allied units you had. This could be very strong. Imagine this also combining with Harold Hounds now, which got a uh, provision buff. Um, you kill all those skulls, those deal damage, but for all the skulls you killed, you also get extra points on the Deafening Siren, which uh, could increase the value of this card immensely. On top of, of course, all the damage that you're doing on your opponent's side of the field, so if that is a Swarm deck, they will be in trouble. Then Salv in Mihid, I don't know how to pronounce that, that's gonna be the only time that I'm gonna try this. You boost an allied unit by six, so it's a spell card for nine provisions, and at the end of your turn, if this card is in your graveyard, you transform yourself into the Unity version of this card. Which is a Spectre of 3 power that is in your graveyard. And also as a counter, basically like the Orb of Insight. That counter is also at 3 and whenever you play a special card, that counter also goes down. When that counter goes to zero, you summon yourself from the graveyard to the ranged row. So basically functioning as a um, Flying Redanian. Because well, it's also kind of a specter, so that kind of makes sense. Then one of the coolest monster cards that has been added in this expansion. Two power Mamuna for 10 provisions. She has zeal and an order ability where she allows you to banish a bronze unit from your graveyard. So permanently removing it. Boosting itself by the uh, power of the unit that you've banished. And then you summon a copy of that unit from your deck to the same row. If you have Sabbath, you play that copy instead. Which can be huge if you can... Find that with something like Gan Kead, um, or Griffin, or the, um, what's her name, the Witch Apprentice. All those cards work very, very well with Mamuna, because you get a, a huge card on Mamuna itself, and then another card right next to it. So, more often than not, this card will go up to the 20s uh, in value that you're getting from this card. Combine that with Kayanti, and that's starting to become a problem Karantir, we've talked about that on Twitter as well, but uh, Karantir is really becoming a problem in the monster decks, because there's another card that we'll be talking about really quickly, but Mamuna herself is pretty limited on that front, it's still within reason, it's still very strong, but it's just enough between in, within reason, which can be said about this card. Um, the card itself, to me, is fine. Value-wise, this is similar to Full Test. 
um, for one provision less, uh, however, so that's not that good. But if you combine this with Karanti, this card becomes immensely strong. But let's talk about her ability first. The Bloody Mistress, Gurney Cora, is back. 7 power for 10 provisions, which is strong already. But at Sabbath, at the end of your turn, so if you have a row of 25 points or more, you spawn... Two Gurnicora's fruit, so one on each side of her. You know what Gurnicora's fruit does. Just a one power unit with Thrive, very strong. And you transform her into Gurnicora. Gurnicora has a similar ability that if you have Sabbath, you boost yourself by one for each Gurnicora fruit on the board. Combine that with the leader ability, combine that with Karantir, combine that with Idaran, and there could be a lot of units, um, a lot of those um, fruits on the board. Basically giving you an engine of like 6, 7, 8 points every single turn per Gurnicora. So if you combine that with Karantir, with Idaran, you could have 3 Gurnicoras, potentially even 5, but that's going to be a very big stretch. Um, but 2 is very realistic to see that happen. Um, combine that with like six Gurnicora fru Gurnicora's fruit, for example, you have an engine on the board of 12 points each and every single turn. On their own, it would be fine because you're not doubling up on the Gurnicora's fruit as well. But the problem is with Karantir. With Karantir, you get um, Gurnicora immediately if you have Sabbath. So the one power copy is going to be negated because she's going to transform into Gurnicora. Going to seven power immediately. Um, giving you two, two Gurnicora's fruit, you play the real Gurnicora then, also two Gurnicora's fruit, so giving you already four fruits. If you have um, Idaran on the board, you double up on those Gurnicora's fruits again. If you have the leader ability, you do that again. So I think the maximum, if you have Idaran on the board, is um, eight Gurnicora's, no wait, ten Gurnicora's fruits and three Gurnicora's herself. So the 10 fruits all have thrive, so they, they just keep on boosting. Three Gurnicoras um, on the board, so that's 30 points every single turn without you having to do anything anymore after you've set this up. Yeah, Karantir is the biggest problem, I think. The card itself would be fine, because if you only have one, you could go up to five fruits, I think. And then Gurnicora herself will still boost herself by five, but you only have one Gurnicora, so remember that. Um, so it could be easily destroyed as well. But just the fact that you can copy her makes this so much more powerful. I have had matches with this card that put me over 200 points easily. Um, and it's just, it's really cool to see, but it's not fun to play against. Because uh, you really need to have the counters for the card um, if you want to deal with it. But then the Skellige card, the uh, Melusine card, another beast, but it's the um, yeah the Siren that is really, really badass. Um, it's one of the uh, monster hunts in Witcher 3, if you're wondering where this card comes from. Uh, well, the design of the monster comes from. 7 power for 10 provisions. Has Veil and an order ability that allows you to spawn rain on an enemy row for 2 turns and damage yourself by 2. So basically you're trading the rain for 2 points on your own. But, at the end of your turn, you damage the adjacent units by 1, and gain 1 base power for every unit you damaged. If either of those units was a cultist, you refresh Melusine's order as well. This is also a very good engine card, by the way. So, basically giving you a 2-point boost on herself, if you have units right next to it that actually benefit from damage, um, you don't actually lose any points, you just gain 2 points on top of that. Um, and then if the unit was if any of those units were cultists, you can keep spawning rain on your opponent's side of the board after every turn. So this is a card I really look forward to to uh, playing in a deck because uh, it, it's the synergy looks really really cool. Then the syndicate card that has been the cause of some uh, controversy in uh, Reddit and the uh, wider community. The Scoundrel, 12 points for 10 provisions for Syndicate as a Witch Hunter. On deploy, you summon the top bronze unit from your opponent's deck to the opposite row and place a bounty on it. For two tributes, for two coins, you can choose whichever bronze unit you want to summon instead and place a bounty on it. So you can choose whatever unit you want from your opponent's deck, put it on the board and destroy it with the Fee ability, because the Fee ability allows you for every coin you spend on it to damage the enemy unit with bounty by one. This is not a targeted ability, so if you just tap him, he will damage the bounty unit on the board wherever that bounty unit is. If it's behind the defender, if it has immunity, this card doesn't care. Um, 
that sounds really strong and it is but remember that you also summon a bronze unit on your opponent's so side of the board so you give your opponent uh, points you if you're not able to kill it then you're in trouble if you can kill it of course then the situation is different this is just a very high power fee ability unit that is going to be very tough to destroy and he can attack enemies behind uh, defenders although of course you need to apply a bounty on that unit which would be difficult if it's behind a defender but still very powerful card but i think it's less op than people tend to think almost there cards wise so the square cell legendary two power for 12 provisions and this is the card that uh, makes that orb of inside combo even stronger so simla's finn ep Dabeer. i think she, he is supposed to be the father of francesca finn de Bear because you can kind of see the name in there but on the ploy you play all copies of a bronze special card from your deck so if you manage to put multiple copies of the same bronze card in your deck you basically ten your entire deck of that single special card and you play all of them at once Remember what I said about the Orb of Insight? There's a lot of them in your graveyard potentially. So all of those are getting pulled out as well. So this could potentially be a card that plays like 8, 9, 10 cards in a single turn. This card is nuts. If you see this in action, there's a few uh, videos of this online already. Um, this is just a, an amazingly cool card. It's not that powerful on its own, but just the thinning you get from playing all the bronze cards, uh, the amount of uh, points you're gonna be getting on Gord, the effect on Gord as well, it's gonna be huge. But yeah, this is just a, a really cool addition to Squiretail. Something that Squiretail really, really needed. And judging from the amount of fun people are having with this, it, uh, it's been very well received. Then, probably the biggest problem case at the moment. I'm gonna warn you, there's an exploit with this card. Don't use the exploit in a match, because you will get a temporary ban on your account. But Arto Terra Nova, a very cool, well, not cool character, he's a very sleazy dirtbag who tried to uh, kind of rape Siri in, uh, the, the tenet, during the Tenet coup. Uh, don't worry, Geralt kills his ass afterwards. But, four power for 12 revisions. Assimilate and deploy, spawn and play a copy of any non-disloyal unit you gave spying to during this game, excluding self there's a reason why this ability says excluding self That's because of course if you manage to play himself you could continuously play this card and that's where the problem lies so there's an exploit with this card that allows you to if you manage to put an arto terra nova on the other side of the board that doesn't count as as himself so what i'm guessing um, what's happening in the game code is that every card that's being played gets a unique identifier and not just based on the type of card and it's that unique identifier that is checked and not the specific card meaning that if you manage to play a copy on the other side of the board you give that one spying that is not seen as an arto Tyranova card it's just seen as a different card that gets spying and you can guess what happens yeah a board filled with arto Terranovas. they all get boosted because the ones that you play afterwards uh, will trigger the assimilate and it's just a, a steamroll. Um, you only need one card for this to happen because you just need to have uh, given Arto Terra Nova that spying tag one time and that's enough to uh, then just do it at the end with one single card. So yeah, don't do it. It's gonna be fixed really soon, but if you do it right now, you will get banned. If I see anybody doing this on one of my matches, I will also report those people. So you have been warned. Don't abuse the fact that this card is currently completely broken. And I think this is the final card to the Northern Realms legendary. We get the Sire de Vries, the uh, headmistress of Ur Artusa herself. So six power for 12 provisions. And this deployability is one of my favorite new additions, although it's gonna be very hard to set up. But at the end of this turn, you reset the order of all allied mages that used their order during this turn. So imagine you have like a couple of students, you have Gerhard of El, um, all of them use their order ability right before you play the Sire. That means that every single one of those units will get to use their order ability in the next turn once again. So basically doubling up on any patient's order ability you have been saving up um, and also increasing that patience by the way because this is resetting the order. So I think if that happens before um, the patience is triggered again, the cards that have the order ability will say, okay, I still have my order ability and patience will go up. So Tisaya is huge don't disregard this card 
Um, unless you're facing an opponent that destroys every single one of your cards, then this card is useless, of course. But this could be very, very powerful. You just need a lot of setup to make this work. So uh, definitely something for the longer around tree, for example. Aside from these new additions, because that was all the new cards, we've reviewed them very thoroughly. I think um, all of those new cards are added to the game right now, so you can just craft them with any scraps you still have left. Um, or the, just the ones that you really want. But aside from that, there has been a balance patch as well. Not that much has changed. There's not really that much important things that I need to mention. Uh, especially Skalliga got a lot of provision buffs on the healing and uh, self-wounding archetype. Um, but m aside from that, the most significant nerf, I think, was with uh, not line pockets. Line pockets went down to 15. Um, but I think, yeah, jackpot went to 13. So I think that's the biggest change. Uh, to provision nerve for jackpot but other than that you can still use line pockets but so even that doesn't really make that much of a difference um other than that yeah mostly provision changes i'm gonna link the patch notes in the description down below so you can check that out over there but again the impact is going to be limited aside from a few cards that you'll see Played more often just because of their provision buffs. And that's it for this episode of Gwentech. We went through every single card of the Tanet coup part of the Price of Power expansion. Cats, that's still a mouthful of um, of explanation there. But uh, there we go. All the new 20, the 26 new cards of the expansion reviewed. Um, but now that's only the side of the conversation because I'm really curious about your. Uh, well, just opinions on these cards. Because, uh, yeah, of course, there's a lot of uh, controversial changes in these cards. There's a lot of controversial abilities in these cards. And I want to see your uh, opinion on them. Are certain cards really overpowered? Is the cause with some other cards? Like, for example, is Caranti really the problem with Bloody Mistress? Um, or is the Bloody Mistress card itself, Gurney Cora itself, the problem? Let me know in the comment section down below what you think of all these cards. And with that, of course, we are good to go with this uh, next season, which is, of course, the season of the Draconet. We're going to be trying to do as many deck guides as I can, but uh, I want to just talk about this a little bit at the end of the video, because I know that I have the, um, the people that actually care about this still at the end of the video here. Um, I'm getting married at the end of the month, so I'm going to try to prepare as many deck guides as I can and try to spread out the releases as much as possible, but there's going to be a gap in video at the end of the month um, because I'm getting married finally because uh, I had to postpone that last year because of the the corona um, rules the corona pandemic sadly uh, again I don't mean that that's the biggest problem of course the the fact that the uh, so many people suffered from this uh, horrible disease is way more important but i just wanted to mention this at the end of the video that there might be a drought in uh, videos uh, by the end of the month so uh, but thank you for understanding and uh, thank you for watching this episode as usual so keep an eye out for those deck guides um as you can see i'm probably gonna do a monster deck guide uh, first just to show off the madness of gurney Cora and mamuna uh, along with karanti because those cards are just Ooh, there's something they're, they're really something so uh look out for that in the near future and i'd like to thank you all enormously for watching this episode and i'd love to see you in the next episode of Gwentage. thank you enormously for watching goodbye and stay nutty